Type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle condition. The food you eat can either promote or prevent insulin resistance and subsequent diabetes. To prevent or reverse type 2 diabetes and enhance healthy insulin sensitivity, anti-diabetes foods have to minimize blood glucose highs and maximize the micronutrient value. Scientists have long discovered a link between nutrition and the incidence of type 2 diabetes. For instance, when you eat too much added sugar, your pancreas releases high amounts of the hormone insulin to dispose of the excessive sugar. Having too much carbs or sugar on a regular basis can offset a cascade of metabolic disturbances such as insulin resistance, which inevitably leads to type 2 diabetes. Studies have also shown that excessive sugar intake can increase your risk of diabetes, regardless of other factors such as alcohol consumption, calorie intake, and obesity. Let's look at what you can eat in order to deal with diabetes and even reverse some of the symptoms. Number 1. Go for high fiber. It is generally best to limit highly refined carbohydrates such as white bread, rice, and pastas, as well as soda, snack foods, and candy. Rather, focus on high fiber complex carbohydrates, otherwise known as slow release carbohydrates. These carbohydrates help maintain blood sugar levels at normal standards because they take longer to be digested, thus preventing the production of excess insulin in your body. They're also a great source of long-lasting energy, and their high fiber content will keep you feeling full longer. You could substitute the following foods as follows. White rice with brown or wild rice. Regular pasta with whole wheat pasta. White potatoes with cauliflower mash or winter squash. White bread with whole grain or even whole wheat bread. Instant oatmeal with rolled or steel cut oats. Sugary breakfast cereal to low calorie wheat rice puff cereal. The glycemic index shows you the speed at which your system turns a food into sugar. Different foods are given a score from 1 to 100, with 100 being the benchmark of table sugar. The higher the score, the faster its sugar releases into your bloodstream. The glycemic load, on the other hand, shows the overall glycemic effect when you have two or more foods. It's the average of all the different foods, with different glycemic indexes, combined. For example, bread would have a high glycemic index, but bread plus peanut butter would have a lower glycemic load than the bread alone, due to the fat in the peanut butter slowing down its digestion. So, the glycemic index applies more when you eat a food as a standalone, and the glycemic load when you eat a combination of foods together. But to get a low glycemic load, you would need to have more low glycemic foods in your meal. High glycemic foods spike your blood sugar levels rapidly, while low ones have the least effect. You don't have to go online to check glycemic index and glycemic load tables. There's an easier way to regulate the carbohydrates you eat. Foods can be classified into two broad categories. The more work your body has to do in order to break down food, the better, as the slower the release of sugars into your bloodstream, the more stable your blood sugar levels are. High carb, low in protein, fat, and fiber. Examples include such as white bread, potatoes, white pasta, white rice, and most baked foods. Chips, sweets, and processed foods? You should limit these in your diet. Low carb, high in protein, fat, and fiber examples include lean meats, nuts, and seeds. Studies have shown the key to weight regulation is to reduce the number of refined carbohydrates in your diet. Focus instead on the coal, or low GI foods, which will keep you feeling fuller for longer. These foods are digested slowly in your body, thus slowing the absorption of sugar into your bloodstream. The result is that you're less likely to experience a rise in your blood sugar levels, you'll feel satiated for longer, and are less likely to overeat. Stay away from processed foods, such as sugary desserts, baked goods, packaged cereal, and instead go for beans, steel-cut oats, whole grain, dark green leafy vegetables, and fat-free yogurt. In addition, eat whole fresh fruit rather than fruit juice. Number 2. Eat high volume, low calorie foods. An empty stomach is more likely to develop cravings and give in to them. The trick here is to be so stuffed on the low calorie, high volume foods that you won't have an appetite for the high carb, sugary goods. Almost every nutritionist Thanksgiving dinner approach would be to fill up on the salads before going in on the pumpkin pie and pizza. You will be slightly hungrier when you're on a calorie deficit, but high volume, low calorie foods can help to keep you full in between meals. And when it comes to high volume, low calorie foods, the best one is always a leafy, non-starchy vegetable. Their calorie count is so minuscule that you can count them as a zero, provided you don't drench it in a high calorie, high sugar dressing. 
Use zero calorie sauces and seasonings to add flavor to your vegetables. Their high fiber content will take up plenty of room in your stomach, while the vegetables high micronutrient content will make sure you get your vitamins and minerals. Number three, be smart about sweets and sugar. Eating with diabetes does not necessarily mean eliminating sugar. You can still enjoy your favorite dessert occasionally. While most sugar addicts generally have a sweet tooth and find cutting back on sweets almost as bad as eliminating them altogether, you may be comforted to know that cravings do disappear and preferences do change. As you incorporate healthy eating habits, you may even find that the foods you used to enjoy now seem too sweet or just too rich. How to include sweets into your diet. Hold back on the bread, pasta, or rice if you want dessert. Including sweets in a meal adds more carbohydrates, thus the reason to cut back on the other carbohydrate foods in the meal itself. Include some healthy fat in your dessert. It may sound counterintuitive to go for high fat desserts over the low fat or fat free ones, but fat slows down digestion, which means your blood sugar levels will not spike as rapidly. However, you should insist on eating healthy fats like olive oil, coconut oil, and flaxseed oil especially the cold pressed ones. If you're like most people, at some point you've probably mindlessly eaten your way through a huge piece of cake or a bag of cookies countless times. Can you actually say that you enjoyed every bite? Indulge yourself in the food by eating slowly and paying close attention to its textures and flavors. This will prevent you from overeating and you'll enjoy it just that bit more. Get creative in the kitchen. Eating low carb doesn't have to be plain and boring. People are getting way more creative in the kitchen, particularly bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts who have a strict diet regime to follow. They're human just like you and me. They get the same cravings and appetites too, but they're smart in the way that they address them. They don't repress it until it erupts like a volcano and turns into a binge. No, they get creative and find healthier alternatives to their usual unhealthy treats. Instead of eating ice cream, they make a super thick, low carb protein shake with the consistency and texture of ice cream. Instead of waffles, pancakes, or cupcakes with regular flour, they'll make it with an oatmeal or protein powder instead for a low carb option. Instead of eating an entire bag of chips, they eat a heaping bowl of popcorn, which is a low calorie, high volume food for less than half the calories. How to cut down on sugar. Reduce the amount of juice, soda, and soft drinks you drink to zero. A recent study showed that for every 12 ounce serving of sweetened beverage you drink every day, you increase your risk for diabetes by approximately 15%. To get your carbonation kick, instead try sparkling water with a splash of fruit juice or a twist of lemon or lime. Use zero calorie natural sweeteners instead of sugar. Sweeten your own foods. Go for unsweetened iced tea, unflavored oatmeal, or plain yogurt, and then add a zero calorie natural sweetener like stevia for yourself, as most manufacturers tend to go way overboard when it comes to adding sweeteners. Cut back on the amount of sugar in your recipes by a quarter or even a third. For example, instead of using one cup of sugar in a given recipe, go for a two thirds or three quarter cup, or completely use stevia instead. Find healthier ways to satisfy your cravings. Rather than going for ice cream, Blend frozen berries with protein powder instead for a creamy frozen treat. Instead of taking your usual milk chocolate bar, enjoy a small piece of dark unsweetened chocolate. Eat half of your normal dessert, then replace the other half with a low carb fruit. Limit alcohol. It's also easy to underestimate a number of carbohydrates and calories in alcoholic drinks, including wine and beer. Cocktails mixed with juice and sugar in particular tend to be loaded with sugar. If you must drink, then do so in moderation. This is to say no more than two 12 ounce drinks for men and one 12 ounce drink for women. In addition, go for calorie free drinks and only drink when eating. If you already have diabetes, it is crucial that you monitor your blood glucose because alcohol can interfere with insulin sensitivity and diabetes medication. Choose fats wisely. Depending on the type, fats can be either harmful or helpful in your diet. You are at a higher risk of heart disease if you are a diabetic, hence the need to be smart about your fats. There are basically two types of fats, healthy and unhealthy fats. However, all fats are high in calories, so it is advisable to watch your portion sizes as well. Saturated and trans fat, avoid. Saturated fats and trans fats are the two most destructive fats. 
The main source of saturated fats is animal products, such as whole milk, dairy products, and red meat. On the other hand, trans fats are also referred to as partially hydrogenated oils, and are formed when hydrogen is added to liquid vegetables to solidify them and prolong their lifespan. While this is marvelous news for manufacturers, the opposite can be said for you. Unsaturated fat. Eat in moderation. Unsaturated fats are the best fats. The main sources are fish and plants. Unsaturated fats are a liquid at room temperature. The best example includes avocados, nuts, canola oil, and olive oil. Eat more omega-3 fatty acids as well, as these are highly effective in supporting brain and heart health, as well as fighting inflammation. Excellent sources include flax seeds, tuna, and salmon. Find healthier alternatives. You can reduce unhealthy fats in your diet and add healthy fats by substituting your regular vegetable oil or butter with olive oil, trimming any visible fat from meat before cooking, and removing the skin from your turkey and chicken before cooking. Snacking on seeds or nuts instead of chips and crackers. For a filling snack, have a healthy handful or include them in your morning cereal. Nut butter is also full of healthy fats and is very satisfying. Grilling, boiling, baking, and stir-frying instead of frying. Serve fish two to three times per week instead of red meat. Adding avocados to your sandwiches as opposed to cheese. The creamy texture will still be there, but the health factor will improve. Using applesauce or canola oil when baking, as opposed to shortening or butter. Preparing your soup with low-fat milk, thickened with pureed potatoes, flour, or reduced fat sour cream instead of using heavy cream. Number 5. Eat regularly and keep a food diary. If you are overweight, the good news is that you only have to shed about 7% of your overall body weight in order to reduce your risk of diabetes by half. Moreover, you don't even have to count your calories obsessively or starve yourself to achieve this. As far as a successful weight loss is concerned, research has shown that two of the most effective strategies involve recording what you eat and adhering to a regular eating schedule. Your body has an easier time regulating your blood sugar levels and weight when you follow a regular meal schedule. Plan to eat moderate and consistent portions for every meal and snack. If recording a journal sounds too old-fashioned for you, a convenient and more illustrative option would be to take a picture of your meals and make a daily, weekly collage to look through. Recording your meals helps you identify your problem areas. Research has also shown that people who keep a food journal when trying to lose weight have a higher probability of achieving their goal and keeping it that way. In fact, keeping a food diary can actually help you lose twice as much weight as you would have without doing so. But how does putting down what you eat and drink on paper help you shed more pounds? Well, for starters, it shows you your problem areas, such as your morning latte or your afternoon snack, i.e. where you're getting higher calories than expected. It also makes you aware of what, why, and how much you are eating, which ultimately helps you cut back on emotional eating and mindless snacking.